This summer, we took a two-week family road trip. These are days six through nine, Minnesota. It's a relatively short three-hour drive from St. Cloud to Lake Vermilion. We had rented a houseboat for three nights over the 4th of July weekend, and I was looking forward to the cool weather of northern Minnesota. Unfortunately, the weather had other plans. I laughed as we turned on I-35, the same interstate that runs through the heart of San Antonio. Sure, we could have made this entire trip on I-35, but what fun would that have been? Lake Vermilion is nearly 40,000 acres and has over 300 miles of shoreline. There are also 365 islands within the lake. It's known for its walleye and muskie fishing. From where we started, at the southern end of the lake, we were within 30 miles as the crow flies from Canada. We arrived to pick up our boat mid-afternoon on Friday. After getting the rundown from the Lake Vermilion houseboats staff, we were underway, heading to a mooring point about two hours from where we started. On the houseboat, we were limited to five miles per hour, so we were heading about 10 miles into the lake on the first day. It was great to be out on the water with a cool breeze blowing through the boat. I spent two summers as the waterfront director for a camp in northern Minnesota while I was in college, and I really miss being on a boat in the lake in the summer. After we found our spot for the night and got tied up, I decided to do a little fishing before starting on dinner. We convinced the girls to get in the water to cool off a bit too, but they didn't care for the lake water that much. I haven't done a lot of narration this trip, but we're finally at our place where, which is our kind of our goal. Uh, we're in northern Minnesota. We're on this beautiful lake, Lake Vermilion, and we're on our houseboat that we're going to be on for the next uh, three nights. It's fantastic here. It's hot though. Holy cow! I did not expect northern Minnesota to be in the 90s, but that's all right. It's going to be in the 60s tonight. It's gonna be beautiful. Um, doing a little bit of fishing. I've got fajitas that we brought all the way from San Antonio on the grill. We've been in the cooler for a week. This cooler that I'm sitting on has been fantastic. It's kept ice. Um, gosh, we left Sunday. It's now Friday. The jugs of water that I had frozen still had pretty much. They were pretty much ice still. Um, so everything got kept cold. It's, it's just been an amazing trip so far. We've been on the go. It's going to be really nice to be sort of in one spot for the next three days. Uh, just kind of here and uh, enjoying the lake. dinner we had s'mores, then it was back to fishing in the fading light. My first catch wasn't what I expected it to be. Nope. <laughs> right, Dad. When my wife took a little break, I picked up her pole, and that's when this happened. Look at that. Small mouth? Yeah, it's a small mouth bass. <gasps> this smolly put up a good fight. I was excited to catch my first fish in Minnesota. Even though it was hot during the day, it cooled off nicely after the sun went down and I fell asleep listening to the loons calling out across the lake.
morning of day two, I realized why I'd caught a crawfish the day before. They were everywhere. I should have picked up a bunch to use as bait, but storing them would have been an issue, so we just left them alone. After breakfast, we untied and went in search of another mooring spot. We were told the lake would be busy because of the holiday weekend, but I wasn't prepared for the amount of boat traffic we saw out and about. I guess everyone wanted to be on the lake to escape the heat. The girls really wanted to swim, so we found a spot in the middle of a large open area and let the boat float while they had fun in the water. How was it? Oh, good. Not, not too cold. Despite being stained a slightly reddish color, the water was incredibly clear. They swam and played for about 45 minutes before we decided it was time for lunch and to start looking for a new mooring spot. all tied up, Rachel and I took the fishing boat out for a spin. We were required to tow another boat behind the houseboat, so we ended up renting a fishing boat and I figured we might as well use it. Once we got out of the cove we were in, I opened it up. It was nice to go faster than 5 miles per hour for a change, and the wind rushing past felt great in the 90 degree heat. So today we tooled around the lake for about uh, two, three hours trying to find another spot to land. And all of them were taken. We did spend some time with the girls swimming and stuff. Um, we ended up coming back toward where we stayed last night and one of the spots we had looked at earlier this morning that had a boat in it was open tonight. So we're staying, we're staying here and it's really, it's really calm. Even though there's a lot of, there's a channel right over there, a lot of, a lot of boats coming through it, 
the uh, the water here is just like glass, so it's really really nice. Um, some burgers on the grill, and uh, man, it's hot. This is northern Minnesota. This is like an hour as the crow flies from Canada, and it's 90 freaking degrees today. It is unbelievably hot up here. Uh, next week it's going to be in the 70s. Go figure, you know. We brought the heat with us, I suppose. Uh, anyway, that's kind of the status of things tonight. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. No point in showering. I took, I took a dip in the lake today. That counts, right? After dinner, we took the fishing boat out again, this time to actually fish. We took it just across the cove into the weeds close to the shore. I had dreams of hooking into a big northern pike, but the lake had other plans. We caught about a dozen of these little yellow perch. They were hungry. We were getting bites almost every time we threw in. When we got back to the boat, we went ashore and built a fire, had s'mores again, and watched the sunset until mosquitoes became unbearable. morning we took our time getting started, then it was off to find another spot. We had discussed trying to go back to the same site we were at the first night since it was closer to base and we'd have to return the boat by 9am on Monday. So we set off for that location and thankfully it was open. spent some time on land this go around, hiking up the ridge and taking in the scenery. So we ended up coming back to same spot we were at the first night. Um, it's not as protected of a cove, but there's shade. There's a little bit of a hiking trail, which is nice. Um, there's a good breeze coming off the water here. Man, it's hot. Holy cow. I was thinking, you know, Minnesota, maybe mid 80s. It's sitting at 90 again today. But, you know, we just came the wrong week, I guess. We came the week of summer in Minnesota, so here we are. Uh, I'm kind of up. I've got this stand of birch trees behind me, which is really pretty. I'm kind of standing on the highest point um, in this little cove area. The wind, I don't know if you can hear the wind. I keep, I was sitting at the picnic table earlier, and the wind sounds like, it sounds like a jet approaching like a, a fighter jet. You know, I, I live in San Antonio, so there's fighter jets all over the place because we've got a couple different Air Force bases. And it sounds like the sound of an F-16 approaching, not screaming past you, but as it's approaching, it makes this just kind of hollow sound in the wind. So Rachel, what do you think of our trip so far? It's good. Tell me about the lake. Um, it's filled with water. <laughs> it's such a smart house. Um, 
it's in Minnesota. Uh, it's called Lake Vermilion. What? You wanted to know about the lake? I guess. A spider in your hair? <laughs> <laughs> there seriously was a spider in your hair. Uh, when was the last time you took a shower? I don't know. When did we get here? Friday? So yeah. Friday morning? It's Thursday night. Thursday night. Say Friday morning for me. And it's been like a week since I shaved. Have you gone fishing? Yeah, a little bit. And did you catch anything? No. You should have gone with us last night. Oh well. Tell me that again. What are you doing? I was holding my phone up high so I might text with Zen. Late in the evening, a front blew in from the north, bringing some rain and thankfully much cooler temperatures. Everyone showered for the first time in a few days, and we turned in early since we had to be underway by 7 the next morning. We all lay in bed listening to the fireworks being shot off around the lake in celebration of Independence Day. In the morning, we headed back to base. I can't say enough good things about the folks at Lake Vermilion Houseboats. I'll put a link to their site in the description. If you're ever in northern Minnesota, look them up. Since we only had a three hour drive to Minneapolis, I decided to take a short detour to Duluth to kill some time. We let the girls dip their toes in Lake Superior and had a nice sit down lunch. Then it was on to Minneapolis. I like this man. Who knew that I-35 sucks pretty much everywhere? Traffic was backed up to more than 30 miles coming into the cities because of all the people coming back from up north. But we made it to a hotel in time to rest up a bit before heading to another baseball game. This time it was the Minnesota Twins versus the Chicago White Sox. All the ballparks I've been to, Target Field was by far the least expensive and most convenient to get to. For just $12, we parked in a parking garage right next to the field. On top of that, the night we went, they were having all-you-can-eat concessions for everyone in the ballpark. Basically, water, peanuts, popcorn, nachos, soda, and other concessions were free for the taking. After the game, we all crashed hard. Our next stop would be our final destination, Illinois.